Look, I've forgotten something. Stop the nearest chemist, you know. It's better still. Drive to the nearest hospital. Yeah, just sit back, Gov. I'll take care of you. Thank you, Joe. Danny. Morning, Gov. Coffee's coming up. Well, was it the right Honourable Robert Constable? I'm afraid so. Ah. His body was found by a tourist who reported it to groundsman Thurkettle of the park staff. Mother with a child who was sailing a boat on the lake, so she thought he got out of a taxi. That's about it. Yeah, and Crockin won't defect to anybody else, so he says. No, no that's the safe, Joe. Uh, have we established the cause of death? The well, forensic are giving him a good going over, but uh, off the cuff. Poison's not suspected. No wounds or marks, no obvious skin penetration. And Mr. Cullen, pathologist, says no funny business. Simple cardiac arrest. And constable's records imply likelihood. You satisfied that it was natural causes? Not completely, Gov. Why? Well, this geezer was a bit special, see, so... <laughs> a bit so... special? He's only a member of the Shadow Cabinet. Yeah, so I looked a bit closer. There weren't any medicines about his person, or in his briefcase, or at his home. And there should have been? Well, so his doctor says. Dejoxin. A regular user, our Mr. Constable. And the pathologist said his lungs were full of fluid. Well, that would follow through if he'd missed his regular dose. Are you implying that he was deliberately deprived of his medication in order to bring about a seizure? Well, if he got himself into a panic, or was put into one, uh, the conditions are just about right. Just thought I'd mention it, Gov. Does Crotkin know that his friend Constable is no longer with us? No, he's expecting to meet him today. It looks as though somebody didn't want him to. Yes. I wonder who and why. And that's not all, sir. There's a row brewing with the Americans. What about? They insist that we hand Crotkin over to them for um, processing. Mm. And Comrade Crotkin, for no doubt good reasons of his own, has no wish to be a guest at Ashford Farm. Uh, remind me of his background, Joe. Uh, Yuri Crotkin is the case officer who's been handling five turned agents belonging to the West. He proposes offering us a list of all turned agents for the past five years, and will pinpoint their respective case officers. Valuable, but hardly spectacular. Why are the Americans being tarsome? I don't know, sir. I mean, surely Crotkin's our property now. They can't demand to see him, can they? It's the bloke in charge, a Colonel Elliot. He's a typical exterminate all commies loudmouth. I don't know how good he is, but he's been sent over here especially to deal with a Crotkin business. Well, Bob Wilkins and his boys call him General Bulmoose. You're from the musical, sir. Little Abner. Oh, um... Three rousing rahs, a few who's ahs, and a hip, 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 hooray. Very good, Danny. I think I'd better see Comrade Crotkin as soon as I've changed. Um, will you alert the safe house, Joe?
Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. You know, in your budget, you can read about it. Attack VO, put it as vice me, Satrudnik me. Dear Constable, but you know, you won't yet. Mr. Crotkin says that he feels he's been. Minya Pazlale Stobe da Prozitvas, Tavares. Pajausta Budu Vam Abiazon. Nu na Kanyetsta. Nashlika Voto, Stopo Ruski Gavarit. Telko Razgavarivatia Niskem Drugim Kromekox Robertum Contable Nebode. No, you will talk to me, Mr. Crotkin. I regret to inform you that your friend Robert Constable is dead. Incidentally, he did not speak Russian, so you can stop pretending that you don't understand English. You will talk to me, because if you do not, we will send you back to your former colleagues, who will no doubt arrange a special welcome for you. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Uh, I feel rather peckish. I always do with jet lag. Do you think you could raise me a snack, some ham, cheese? I, I noticed a delicatessen just around the corner. Would that be an imposition? Certainly not. Sir. Thank you. May I have some more coffee, please? Uh, yes, of course. Some more coffee uh, for Mr. Crotkin. You go with him, old boy. I'm sure he needs assistance. Uh, no hurry. Yes, sir. Uh, now, Mr. Crotkin, let us get to know each other. Uh, do you mind if I take a few notes? Is interrogation to start now? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that will follow in a day or two. This is just a few uh, personal particulars. <laughs> This is private property. Don't give me crap, Sonny. I don't have the time. I can't let you proceed, sir. This is a government establishment. You heard me. Just stay where you are and no jumpy move, eh? Slowly. I'm sorry, Colonel, but I don't have the authority you to let you... You have now. Now, tell me about your relationship with Robert Constable. Where and when did it begin? I cannot remember exactly the first time we met. It could have been Praga or perhaps Dresden. Did he make the first approach or did you? I did. By order of my colonel, he knew that he was a very important man. And yet you don't remember whether it was Prague or Dresden? <laughs> could I have a word, sir? This is Colonel Elliot of the CIA. He has authorization to be here. You bet your sweet ass I have. Are you the guy that's processing this commie? Possibly. Mm -hmm. That is Sir William Logie's signature. Check it out if you want to, Mr. Percival. Captain Percival. That's all right. Sir William told me to expect you. That's right. I want to see Crotkin. You may see him, but I must ask you not to address him. Now, follow me. Is this where the interrogation takes place? Yes. When? When we're ready. This Crockton, huh? Not exactly Fort Knox. No. You know, this safe house stuff went out with Peter Laurie. We've moved on. I think you'll find our safeguards perfectly adequate. The house next door is ours. Double glazing is bulletproof. The space between the glazing is filled with cryogenic ethylene. I'm sure you're familiar with it. The gas produces the effect of rotary dispersion, thereby precluding any pickup vibrations on the outer pane. No eavesdropping, if you follow me. We want in on the interrogation. You'll need specific authority for that. I'll get that. When you do, I'll comply. And then we want Krotkin stateside. No. Not going to United States. Well, well. You didn't say he spoke English. You didn't ask. I didn't ask.
doing, Danny? Just seeing what's on Sally Gov. Nice picture. You haven't bugged our allies' vehicle, I hope. Just practicing a bit of isolationism, Gov. Keeping visiting firemen isolated from European traffic. Know what I mean? The man's a moron. Yes, well, he's a colonel in the CIA. Billy, that's not funny. He wants to sit in on the interrogation and then take Krotkin to America. I need a policy directive. Oh, my dear Aubrey. You've been in this service long enough to know the score. I sit in on Joint Intelligence Committee meetings when I'm invited. I report to the Cabinet when I'm invited. I don't make policy. It's dictated to me. There are some areas of security that cannot be entrusted to amateurs. Surely the CIA have learnt that by now. Yes. And no. We are trying Which? to mend... Oh, Aubrey, we are trying to mend past breaches between our security services and theirs. The CIA is a difficult one, as you well know. They seem to imagine everyone employed by us is, is paid from Moscow, uh, and we regard them as hysterical children playing with matches. We're both wrong. No, the, uh, the PM wants us to bend over and bend over backwards to help, and to be seen to be helping. I think, I, I think, generally speaking, we can take that as our directive. What exactly are you telling me to do? I never tell you what to do, Aubrey. I leave that to your good judgment. Yes? He is. I'll uh, hand you over. Yes, Joe? Colonel Elliot has just rung to request a private meeting with you, sir. Has he indeed? He wanted to know if you could shift your ass. Ah. Tell the Colonel to meet me by the lake at Crystal Palace at 1900 hours this evening. Very good, sir. General Bull Moose wants a powwow. you people met in St. James's Park and walked among the ducks. This is one hell of a long way to come. Why? I thought as a fighting man you would find the atmosphere of this park more amusing. Shall we walk? Captain Percival, huh? Is that a military rank? Naval. The equivalent of a colonel. You requested this meeting, far away. You, uh, seem to resent my presence at your safe house, Captain. Well, not at all. I was puzzled as to what precisely you expected to achieve in view of the express wishes of the defector. He's a commie. Who cares what he wants? I just thought there was a case for respecting his wishes until at least we'd bled him of his usefulness. Uh, to the point, Colonel. Okay, I'll spell it out. We want Crock and stateside. If he insists on talking to you, we go along with it, but we want one of our quiz team present at the interrogation. We want a transcript of the meeting, and we want an unedited tape of every goddamn second from the moment that door opens till the Ivan steps into the room. My boy set it up. I see. Is that everything? You bet your sweet ass it is not. We use a slipman young lie detector, Mark IV, one of my team operating the box. Ah. I have to tell you that I'm not in favor of the use of lie detectors. I don't give a damn who's in favor of it. Uncle Sam is, and that's who pours out the gravy. It's a tried and proven instrument. If you limers had stepped out of the Middle Ages, you wouldn't have so many cock-ups. Another giant step for mankind, would you say? What? The Schlippmann Young lie detector Mark IV. What the hell are you talking about, Max? Science happened. Get with it. I keep trying. Colonel, kind of the real reason why I chose this park as meeting place was that about five minutes away, as you know, is the safe house where our security people are keeping Mr. Kropkin. My plan was to interrogate him there this evening uh, in your presence. Your demands clearly rule that out. I spell out what we want, that's it. Then the interrogation is postponed. Anything else? No. 
I suppose you people have considered the possibility that Comrade Krotkin was planted on us for the purposes of disinformation? We have. We don't go for it, but that's one good reason for the simple young lie detector. Very well. You thinking what I'm thinking, Gov? I rather think I am. Let's get back to the safe house. Something the matter, sir? No, no. Everything going according to plan. Shall I draw the curtains? No, leave them. Um, just keep moving about, both of you. Noses didn't let us down after all, Gov. No. You all right, Tuttle? Just about, sir. What the hell's going on, Percival? What exactly do you mean? I told you they're determined to wipe this guy out before he can talk. I don't trust anything around here. As you see for yourself, our precautions are perfectly adequate. We got in just by storming through. The guys downstairs didn't even attempt to stop us. They didn't, because I told them not to. We were expecting you, you see. In any case, Comrade Krotkin isn't even here. Then who the How'd you know I was on my way here, smartass? Intuition. Something that your Schlipman Young Mark IV doesn't record, I fancy. Well, I'll bid you good night. Uh, good night, Wilkins. Good disguise, Tuttle. Nearly fooled me. It's all too neat. The demand to defect only to us, and specifically to Robert Constable, who goes and dies the next day. Yes, and uh, why Constable? He had many links with the common turn, Sir William. He was a natural choice. On the face of it. In fact, Joe, we have no hard evidence that Constable ever met him at all, which could explain his timely demise. You mean as the one person who could blow Krotkin's cover? Precisely. You think he was murdered? I can't prove it, but I've no doubt of it. Really? Uh, and what about this other happening, this shooting? All part of the pantomime, designed to convince us, and more particularly the Americans, that the Soviets want Krotkin silenced. The implication being that he has information of real value to sell us. If we fall for it, it could put us on the wrong tack for half a decade and even lead us to eliminate perfectly loyal and valuable agents. But if Colonel Elliot has fallen for it, why is he so keen on this lie detector? Have it. Uncle Sam is very gadget-minded. A dangerous tendency. The right person can confuse or defuse any instrument if they're trained to it. Look at you and your computer. No, I think we must assume that the KGB picked Krotkin for this job because he had that quality, among others. I suppose it would be unethical not to convey our suspicions to the Americans. Yes, it certainly would, Joe. In any case, I already have. But the gallant colonel poo-pooed the dangers of disinformation. Billy, I've got a formal proposal here that we put no difficulties in the way of their taking Krotkin to America. Really? Yes. Very well, if that's what you think is best, I'll see the PM with it at the first opportunity. But you know, Aubrey, I can't help feeling that we should go over Elliot's head and advise his masters in the Pentagon that whatever Krotkin says is to be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, no, uh, with respect, I would suggest that you draft such a report, file our copy in the usual way, and forget to send the original. Very well. Is that everything? Uh, for the moment. Thank you for your forbearance, Billy. Not at all. We always assume uh, you know what you're doing. Uh, one thing puzzles me. Why Boo Moose? Three rising rahs, a few huzzas, and a hip, 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 hooray. Oh, uh, Annie, get your gun. No, no. Lil Abner. Oh. Annie. Hello, sir. How are you? All right. Something distinctly odd about this one, wouldn't you say, Joe? That's what my taste buds tell me. 
Oh, by the way, Danny, ballistics confirm that the shell case you found on the roof was fired from an Austrian 223 Star sniping rifle. The ammunition itself probably came from East Germany. Mm -hmm. Oh, that figures. Yeah. Now then, Gov, that little matter you asked me to look into. CIA information is not on offer, and US Army intelligence don't want to play ball. Ah. However, Gov, with a little bit of wheeling and dealing and a bit of ducking and diving... I'm not interested in your methods, Danny, merely the results. Oh. Well, anyway, it's, uh, interesting reading. Oh, Gov, are they gonna let the Russian go? To the States, I mean? I've no idea. It's not my decision. Well, how's about giving it a little, um, nudge, eh? I already have. <laughs> Yeah, you read that file, Gov. Good God. He's been at it before. Why don't you guys just back off and let us professionals handle these commies, huh? Uh, there are reasons, Colonel, but I wouldn't dream of risking our special relationship by enumerating them. You know something, Percival? I don't like MI5, MI6, MI57. I don't like limeys, I don't like you. You just don't recognize truth when you see it. Wasn't it your amusing compatriot, Mark Twain, who said, truth is a very precious commodity. One should be economical with it. Gentlemen. Hi, Logie. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but it was necessary for me to see the PM personally in this matter. You may have Master Krotkin, Colonel. Captain Percival's recommendation was accepted without question. I suggest that he is removed at the first possible moment. I have a jet standing by, Sir William. I'm much obliged to you, sir. And to you, Captain Percival. And my pleasure. Mr. Crockin will be removed from the safe house forthwith and will await you at the airfield. Thank you. You know, you limeys never cease to surprise me. But I guess I can't complain, huh? <laughs> Thanks a lot, fellas. I must say, I'm glad he's not one of ours, your General Bull Moose. My dear Billy, you forget the second line of the song. What's good for General Bull Moose is good for the USA. Bum, bum. Daniel Tavares. Move. Come in. Ah, group captain. Uh, captain Bergel. I just dropped in to bid you bon voyage. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say one thing for you guys. You're, uh, Special services may be antediluvian, but your manners are impeccable. You know, uh, Group Captain Harvey? I'm just on my way to the tower. Perhaps you'll join me in the mess of drink after the takeoff, Captain Russell. Thank you. I'd like that. Good. And then it? Goodbye. And safe journey. Thank you. You really are an unmitigated fraud. 
I hope you're properly contrite. <laughs> and you're a bowler hat and superior smugness. <laughs> That's not an act. I've been wearing one of these ever since I was a nipper. Well, I can't say I enjoy caricature of my countrymen, but it might just work. To a fellow you do it with such panache. Uh, do you think they, they really bought it? Ruskies are nobody's fools. Nor am I, I hope, and I bought it. The world is only too eager to accept the figure you portrayed as Mr. America. The Russians are no exception, nor, I'm afraid, are the British. Well, I'll go along with it so they think we've swallowed the bait hole. Our files will show that in spite of British reservations, the CIA accepted Krotkin as a genuine defector. And that'll get back to KGB? Probably, on the basis of our past performance. If we have a mole, at least let us use it. Well, I always said the British were the most devious of all. We've had our hiccups, one can't deny, but then we've been at it longer than most. Oh, one thing, I would be greatly obliged if you keep me informed as to Mr. Krotkin's progress in your care as the unwitting deceiver of his own masters. Of course, I do that anyway. And, uh, thank you for your help, Captain Percival. I think we can chalk this one up to the CIA. Ah, with a little bit of British help. Huh. <laughs> We're ready for takeoff, sir. Okay. Let's get airborne, Jeff. See you around, Lammy. Oh, absolutely. What? 